The channels panel can be used to determine what colors your image is made from. In general, that will either be RGB or CMYK, but it doesn't have to be. We learned about other types of images that have um, different number of channels like duotones and grayscale images. Viewing the channels panel is a quick way to see these colors and how they break down to form your image. As you can see from the image below, a colored image can easily be made from RGB or CMYK. Just looking at the image doesn't allow us to know for sure what the color in the image is truly made from. And it really depends on what you're working with on what you want. And so this image looks the same to me on screen as RGB on the left or CMYK on the right. But you can see that in order to make the image, it would be made up of some combination of red, green, and blue wavelengths if I'm in RGB color mode, and some combination of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black wave, uh, not wavelengths, um, uh, densities of ink in CMYK. The channels panel can also show us if an image is using more than just the standard channels that we're used to. So the CMYK channels or the RGB channels or even like grayscale and duotone channels. Specifically, we can use the channels panel to create and define spot colors. The image below was in CMYK before I got started. We then converted it, or I converted it, uh, to be made from three spot colors. I want to print with blue, orange, and black instead of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This process is used to ensure that we use specific ink colors instead of a process blend. And in this case, it could be used for two different reasons. So I could use the spot colors to ensure that I get the exact shade of blue, orange, and black that I want. Or I could do it because it would be easier to print. And so if I was going to print this image in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, I would have to use some density of those colors. And so the colored image is on the left. But if I was to break it out into what are called color separations, represented by some amount of cyan, some amount of yellow, uh, magenta, and black, you could see on screen how much of each amount of that color would have to be used to create the color for the penguin. And so if we look at the outside blue area of the penguin, it would have a lot of this color because color, separa color separations are represented by the density of the color and the darker it is, the darker the color that you're printing is. And so I would guess that this uh, color separation represents the cyan color separation because this image probably has the most cyan in it. And so in this example, I would have to have a lot of cyan in the, in the outside of the penguin image. I would have to have a fair amount of whatever color this is, a good amount of whatever color this is, and a little bit of this color. But the problem with this is when you print, you have to print one color right over top of the next. And when you do that, you have to make sure they line up perfectly. It's called registration. And so instead of printing it like this, where we have different densities of color being overlapped to create the color, right, because we only have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so if I wanted to print the beak and the feet in an orangey color, I would have to use some amount of yellow and magenta combined to make that. And so my guess is the color separations on the bottom here. This one would be yellow because the beak and the feet probably have a lot of yellow in it. And then the other color used to make up the beak and feet would be magenta and it's not as much and so this would be the yellow separation this would be the magenta this one would be the cyan and this one would be the black one because the only black that you really have in the image is in the eyes and there's a little bit in it to make the outside now that's harder to print than if we just printed with three colors because when we print with three colors we're printing with actual blue ink actual orange ink and and the exact shade of black ink that we want for the eyes and so instead of having a little bit of cyan a little bit of magenta a little bit of yellow and a little bit of black to create the outside shape of the penguin we can just print that shade of blue wherever we want that to be and then when we print the orange color we're only printing the orange where the beak and the feet are and when we print the eyes, we're only printing the black where the eyes are. And this would be much easier to print than trying to layer four identical sized images over top of one another perfectly. We also would use it in printing processes that prefer spot colors over um, process colors. And so screen printing, a lot of the times you print with the actual color that you want to print with. And so in this case, if I was going to screen print this penguin, I would never print it as a four color process image. It's too difficult to do in screen printing and it's needless. It would cost more money to print four colors than it would to print the three colors that I want. 
So we're going to talk about making spot colors and you can do spot colors the way that we're going to make it where we have this image and we've recognized that it's better for us to print three colors instead of four. But I want to note before I go through this whole process, that does not mean that you have to do it this way. You could have an image, a photograph of Santa Claus drinking a Coke bottle at Christmas and you want the Coke bottle to be Coca-Cola red. And so the entire image is made out of cyan, magenta, yellow and black. But then the Coke bottle itself, you could change that to be a spot color. And so you could have a combination of CMYK and spot colors in the same photograph if you wanted to. For us, I think it's easier to start with an image where you say, I have this image and I want to convert the entire thing to be spot colors. And then once you get comfortable with that process, then you can go ahead and get more complicated. You could do things like... You could change the color of somebody's blue eyes to be a very specific shade of blue, and you can print it with specific blue ink if you wanted to. So let's get started with creating spot colors. The first thing to know about creating spot colors is that spot colors only apply to printed outputs. There is no reason to ever add a spot color channel to an RGB image. So when in doubt, never add that to the RGB image. The second thing to know about spot colors is to never delete the original CMYK channels. So when we look at the channels panel, you can see it will start with CMYK because we're going to put our image in CMYK color mode. And we're going to add additional spot channels, but you cannot delete the CMYK ones even though they will not have anything in them because the CMYK channels are what communicate to the file and to your graphic art program and to your printer that it is a printing uh, document. Instead, we're just going to erase or delete anything that happened to be on the channels and we'll just have empty channels that we're not using. The steps that we're going to follow for creating your spot colors in Photoshop are to first convert your image to CMYK color mode. Then we're going to open the channels panel so we can see what channels are available. We need to make a selection and so when you create a spot channel you don't have to make a selection first. You could add it. You could say this is going to be Pantone 185 or this is going to be purple ink. But if you make the selection first, it will automatically um, create the spot channel in the shape that you want it to be. And so for our purposes, we're going to make a selection of the area that we wish to change into a spot color. And then for step four, we'll choose the select, uh, we'll select the option for a new spot channel via the option flyout menu on the channels panel. When you do this, the new spot channel dialog box will appear and you will choose a color via the square color icon. You can choose any random color, kind of like a color picker if you want to, because spot colors do not have to be Pantone colors. You can just say, I want, I want a specific green color, and you can pick it off a chart. Um, or if you want to choose a very specific color from a color library, you can then choose Pantone 185 if that's the color that you want. Once you've selected OK to accept your color and your name choice for your channel, um, your channel will automatically appear on the channel's panel and because you made a selection first it will be in the shape of whatever you selected. Then repeat that for any additional spot colors you wish to create and so we'll do that three times for our penguin, blue, orange, and black. When you're done you can go back to the CMYK channels and delete or erase anything that's on them and so what's going to happen when we create our three new channels is we're going to keep all the CMYK artwork and create a blue, an orange, and a black channel we'll need to go back and delete all the CMYK stuff or else we'll have a duplicate of the image. We'll have an image that will print cyan, magenta, yellow, and black plus orange, blue, and our spot black color. Um, when you do this, you will end up with transparency and if it really bugs you, you can change your layer on your layers panel to be white and it will add an, op uh, an opacity behind the colors and it will make it a little bit more pleasing, but it really doesn't matter. Um, it will still output the way that you want. And so I have some screenshots here that we'll go through, and then in the next video I will go through the process of doing this with you in Photoshop. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll open the image and save it as a working file and all that good stuff. Um, then you'll go to the image menu and make sure the image is in CMYK color mode. I grabbed this little guy off of the internet. I did a Creative Commons search and images on the internet are in RGB color mode, and so it's in RGB. I have to convert it to CMYK. I then open the channels panel just to see what I have and with all the channels selected I made a selection of the outside shape of the blue area on the penguin. With the active selection you can hit the option flyout menu in the top right hand corner of your channels panel and choose to make a new channel but we're not making a new base channel we're making a new spot channel and there's a difference so make sure you choose spot channel. 
a dialog box will appear and it will basically say, well, what do you want to do? And mine says spot black, but that's not what I want. I want a blue color. And so I clicked on the little color square swatch. It opened the color picker. Notice it says color picker for spot color instead of color picker for foreground or background color like we're used to. And then you can click around and you can choose the color you want. But I didn't want any color. I wanted a very specific color. And so I hit color libraries. I found Pantone Blue 072C. And then I selected OK. When I did that, I made sure that the name of the spot channel is Pantone Blue 072C and selected OK. As soon as you select OK, the channels panel will add a new channel. It will fill in the shape that you had selected with 100% of whatever the fill color was that you chose. Now, when you look at channels, you're looking at density breakdown. And so on the channel that says Pantone Blue 072, it looks like I have a black outline on the penguin. But I know, because I chose color of blue, that it would print using blue ink. I then repeated that for the eyes, and I used Pantone Black C. And then I repeated it for the beak and the feet, and I used Pantone 137C. Now, that doesn't finish the process, because I still have a cyan, magenta, yellow, and black version of the penguin, plus the blue, orange, and black version of my spot penguin. And so the last thing you need to do is make sure that you have all of the channels, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black selected, see how they're active, and then you can delete the content. You can hit the delete key, you can do edit cut, you can do um, uh, edit clear, well, however you want to do, you have to make sure those channels are empty. And you can see here that the channels are now empty, which creates transparency because the opacity was on those channels. And if it really bugs you, you can go to your layers panel and just fill your base layer with a color and then it will go from being transparent to having an opaque background. In the next video, I will go through the step-by-step -step and actually show you how to make the, the spot channels in Photoshop.